And all right, so you've already we've already been talking, but can you introduce yourself to those that don't know you? Hi, my name's Aaron Co. Uh, I am a VP at Jobsoft doing a lot of marketing and uh, business development stuff. But mm -hmm. on this uh, part, this pizza bandit product, I am uh, executive producer on it, mm -hmm. uh, and I try to put a lot of you know wisdom into our direction and the approach that we're taking for. Uh, with the game. Okay, and then we were. Uh previously talking about Rift Sweepers and you were saying that it was like too difficult for a lot of the average players. Um, so when you ended up switching and switching gears and starting to create Pizza Bandit, what kind of was like the main inspiration like for that? Like was it somebody secretly wanted to be a pizza shop owner in the studio? Or? So the Rift Sweepers, uh, you know, the, the style of action that we try to portray that is still I think in line with what we're going for in this game but there were a few elements in that game that really uh, had a good impression on audience mm -hmm. and those two are one pizza and two pizza cooking mission mm -hmm. so we have we have you know the, the pizza the, the drop part coming down from the sky when you call your supply box is a pizza box with you know pizza coke and and ammunitions and i think a lot of people enjoyed that mm -hmm. we did have ridiculous amount of damage for that thing and you do get hit too so uh we a lot of we had a lot of negative comments on why why the hell i die after using it but uh that element of pizza and the 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 pizza cooking mission which it is very much more refined in the Pizza Bandit than the previous one. Uh, I think those were the key elements why we we tried to keep that pizza element in the game or, uh, from the get go, <laughs> and we tried to create everything around it. So the story and and how the pizza works and all that, all, and how everything looked in terms from the logo to everything. Uh, we we were like, yeah, we got pizza. That's we're stripping out everything else, but we're keeping it pizza. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, it's still... I'm more asking, like, what kind of caused the collaboration? Because, uh, like you said before, Rift Sweepers was a shooter. So, like, what kind of pushed the team to be like, we do want to add this food element? Or was it just... Uh... Oh, so... Yeah, so... After we... After we, you know, decided to, you know, make it our own pizza, and we called the Pizza Bandit, and we started going to the shows and showing it to, uh, yeah, showing it at Indie Festival, Pax West, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, level up. Like, we wouldn't notice. We did, we didn't really showcase our pizza mission that we knew that a lot of people liked. We we tried to get the the earlier missions uh, uh, tested uh, with the players, but we did have a video go, go, going on a TV screen and as I you know as talking to the players I would look around every time to the aisle and every time there's like uh, 15 10 15 people like gathered around the TV it's when they're making pizza mm -hmm. like huh so the cooking really peaks for people and and you know, and that got us to thinking, you know, internally, you know, like, hey, we have a lot of these different types of missions, and we, but but everybody seems to like this one. Maybe we should try incorporating these food uh, element to it. And like, as we're working on it, like, all the humor, all the all the funny stuff that comes out from each mission, mm -hmm. it always gravitates towards cooking. So like, you know what? We gotta get this. This is this is uh, this is just so fun. Just in terms of making it, but also playing it too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's why we're trying to we're trying to you know uh, put our um, push ourselves to be a little bit uh, like overcooked plus uh, third person shooter. Mm -hmm. So now with us uh, talking about it earlier, uh, you said you guys were a smaller studio made up of like six to eight people. Have you had to outsource any of like the uh, like the project? Like, oh, we need X Y Z thing. We can't. We may not have the knowledge, but somebody else might. And just like, 
uh, getting an assistance through that way, or was it just more trial and error? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we, so our funny thing about our studio is we lack some key talent, mm-hmm. uh, which is really really painful for us. We don't have an animator. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the small animation changes are for game designer slash uh, programmer slash sound designer also takes care of it. So we do a lot of, we try to, you know, wear different hats and try to learn different uh, different talents. But for the key, you know, key stuff, uh, we do outsource. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a few, a, a few guys up in Canada that I used to work uh, well he was my co-founder in, in other mobile studios that I ran mm-hmm. in the past and he helped out a lot uh, there's uh, other guys in Korea also that, that helps out mm-hmm. but they're uh, most of them are very temporary based mm-hmm. uh, based uh, we are hoping to get the guy in Canada to work a little bit closer to us but you know it's a process, so I get it. Yeah, yeah, it takes a, it takes a while. So with the trailer you were showing me, you could hear the different like voice lines in the background. So, based off of like region, are you gonna have different voice actors for it, or are you gonna have uh, just like a unified one? And then as the game progresses, if it grows in popularity or sell rate, uh, incorporate other voices, like languages. So, uh, in- in the whole build that you're gonna, uh, that we've, we've, uh, with Alpha Testa, there's only one voice actor <laughs> that is only during the cinematic uh, scene that we have. All the rest are actually, uh, it's uh, uh, voice to text generation, uh, text to voice generation. <laughs> and we had a lot of feedback that it sounds, you know, really bad, it sounds robotic, and but I think the technology uh, is getting a lot better, and we are we are we process it through a lot of different ways, mm-hmm. and now now it's getting better and better. Uh, we I mean if we have budget to use voice actors, we 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 really want for the key um, characters key characters in the game, like you know the the protagonist and. There's a uh, guy called uh, Finn, which is sort of like an android that drives the time machine and, and helps you out with your 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 pizza shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, those two, uh, and he's the guy who who narrates all the mission objectives and stuff. So those two would be awesome. But I think we uh, even from like build three months ago, Finn's voice was it's, it was really awkward. But I think uh, for our next build for the past. You'll see a lot smoother pronunciation and intonation. So we're we're getting there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, our hope is to get voice actors in the future. No, yeah, it's <laughs> voice actors are expensive unless you uh, uh, outsource it for like freelancers or people who just are passionate. Um, with you earlier, we were talking about how like the roll mechanic is such a pivotal feature of the game, and how there's a stamina meter. Um, is there any gameplay elements that let players actually increase that stamina meter so that they have the ability to roll more? Like, as they, uh, play and succeed? Mm, not that I know of. Okay. Uh, you know, Cretus, though, uh, Cretus game, uh, that stamina was, you could increase it, you could, you know, if, uh, but there were so many game design elements that mm-hmm. consumed stamina, which made it so difficult for that game. Like, if you run, stamina uh, goes down. If you roll, stamina goes down. And you can't reload while running. You can reload while getting hit. Like, reload cancels when you get hit. There's so many stuff that were making it so much difficult. This one, instead, uh, we try to make the stamina only go down when you roll. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that that gives uh, a lot of room for players to be able to maneuver a lot of this mission without having to increase that stamina. Okay, it makes sense. 
Um, now with the pizza making uh, that we saw, is it going to be just like one finite pizza style, or as you go through these different missions, like depending on the area, you get to create different types of pizzas? Like you're not going to have the same kind of pizza uh, in France. I'll say this. It's not just about pizza. Okay. No, look, no. <laughs> Like he's failing at pizza shop, right? Mm -hmm. And he's keep on making pizzas. He's gonna fail at his pizzas too. So we're gonna pull him through a lot of these missions where he has to learn a lot of different types of cooking. Mm -hmm. So you'll not just see pizza, but you'll also see uh, some grilling, some flipping, some slicing, some you know. Yeah, you're, you're gonna see a lot of different oh. style of cooking as you would in the overcooked. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're thinking, you know, it, it helps them to learn a lot of these different uh, cuisines so they can actually make it. Mm -hmm. And then you were talking about uh, the demo on the Steam Deck earlier. Um, yeah. How at first it wasn't wanting to cooperate with it, but then uh, an update allowed it to re uh, play better. Was that partially because of like a change in the frame rate? Uh, where Steam Decks have been notorious for dropping, like, the refresh rate? I think, it, uh, I think two things. Uh, one, in terms of control, mm -hmm. uh, we've put in a lot of work on on the controller, mm -hmm. and, and you know, uh, as a Korean and a lot of my friends in Korea, like, only, I think, less than, like, 10% actually use controllers that they're all keyboard and mouse players, so <laughs> we didn't know how to, how to make a good experience, but through going through a lot of different shows like Pax West and Level Up, you know, Pax and Pax East, uh, we had a lot of feedback from them. <laughs> so we were able to make it work really well on, you know, those Xbox controllers that we, we, we utilized during the show. Mm -hmm. And we were finally able to get all of those bits into uh, set up for the Steam Deck. And I think the re that's one part. Uh, so the controller works really. Uh, controller uh, works really nicely, uh, and I don't know what they did recently, or I don't know what we did recently. Like you said, the frame drop has improved significantly. <laughs> so, and I'm not using the new LED version either. Uh, it, but it, it. Oh, the OLED for the Steam Deck. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Steam Deck yeah. So. I, you know, I'm using the old one that I purchased uh, early last year, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's working really smoothly. We didn't have to go that, uh, lower the graphics quality all that much. Well, practicing, uh, we set it to, like, normal, and it just went one part. Yeah, it was great. Now, uh... I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. <laughs> uh, obviously, with cooking games and but like bounty hunter slash 3d shooters um there's always inspiration from other games have you reached out to like any other studios about like collaborating where like hey can we borrow a character for an easter egg or uh can we have a character inspired by for this as like a nice little nod i i kind of am looking forward to we 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 have a lot of stuff to do internally to you know clean up and, mm -hmm. and get the basic concepts in there. But I we have like uh, we've seen a lot of comments in some of the videos saying that there's gotta be like pizza tower arcade game mm -hmm. or you know there's, there's a lot of comments on some of the some of the inspiration that we should uh, take from other games. So we would love to. Uh, we just have to you know get the stuff done on our side to actually get the collaboration going. So mm -hmm. going around for that. There's a lot of legal to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I know when I was uh, showing the game, somebody was like, "You can have Master Chef there for Master Chief," but uh, <laughs> nice little. Yeah, that's gonna be that. That one's gonna be tough. Uh, I'm thinking a little more like indie studios. Yeah, stuff. indie yeah. studios are typically easier to work with. Um, you were talking about how the team is f basically from a whole bunch of different studios, and how none of the not. None of them, but most of you guys do not have the first-person or third-person shooter aspect. What made the team really want to go into that between the two games, the, with uh, Rift Sweepers and then Pizza Bandit? So, uh, when we, we launched here in 2018, this is, uh, I, 
I'm a close friend with all of these guys uh, when they, you know, found the studio, but I joined uh, early last year. Mm-hmm. But uh, at that time, I think uh, we made RPGs, but it was always towards action RPG. So uh, we made a mobile RPG, mobile action RPG in, I think we launched in 2019, I think. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, it did do well, but uh, right around that time, uh, like one of the big, big uh, IP, like action IP, uh, action cartoon, well, manga, I would say, IP from Japan knocked on our doors and we started working on that project. Mm-hmm. And, and, but that one that, that one didn't get released due to, you know, the publisher slash whatever business reasons. But after that, we're like, you know, we really got to do work on some action, action games, but our, our director, uh, who's in charge, who's leading the production of this, uh, this game is super into shooter. And, and, you know, I think, I think he's the one who, who pushed the most. And this one day he just came back with, Hey, if we don't know what we're going to do, let's, can we do this? And he, he, he pulled out a prototype and had got the team to play it mm-hmm. and like, Oh, this is looking good. And with that prototype, we were able to get a little funding uh, after a G Star, uh, which uh, it's just one uh, one of the big game shows in Korea. Mm-hmm. Uh, we put the game, we put the that prototype out there, and we got a, a funding from it. So, you know, it's uh, it's we're on a like verge of life and death uh, situation for the studio, running out of the money, but this thing just you know notched up uh, our got us funded so we're like yeah let's really go for it great job so, uh, I, our our director's name is Shivo and he you know he's he's pulling pulling the pull, pulling the wheel on this one and and oh by the way our CEO used to be I mean we're we're we've been around for a long time and so uh and our CEO used to be a ranker on Rainbow Six and this is a long time ago so we do enjoy a lot of uh, shooter games Mm-hmm. So I think that kind of you know, supported it too. So what have been, like through the development process, what has been some of like the, not head- like setbacks slash headaches, but not, um, or even just like the learning curves? Mm. Learning curves, huh. Because you were talking about how earlier with the other game, you had to you figured out it was just too difficult for most players, yeah. and then the stamina aspect of all the different uh, like things that relied upon it. But out like outside of those, so um, I think trying to figure out so. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned before, uh, we don't have a, a animator, mm-hmm. uh, but we don't have an illustrator either in our studio. So everything that we do is we create from 3D assets or we try to imagine and we put piece together stuff that we have. Mm-hmm. And and even our, uh, our, our outsourced collaborator, uh, he's, he, he doesn't do illustration either so so it's the visual concept or visual design I think uh, we I believe if we have the right talent we could do a lot better job mm-hmm. with it but we have to we we are really struggling to try to try to make the game pop or stand out without a you know very strong visual style mm-hmm. uh, I mean, we're trying to put in the style as much as we can with 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 the talent we have, but I think that was one of the biggest struggle. Like, um, you know, trying to come up with a a logo or a key art or you know, a vi- a video or new concept for a character. It's 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 been a little struggle. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, like I said uh, 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 during our introduction. Um, uh, before that we like to make the core gameplay with a lot of the borrowed assets from the stores and stuff mm-hmm. 
and then we try to make it better. And there's a advantage to that, but there's also a disadvantage to that because you've made so much of it. It's really it takes a lot of resources and efforts to to change the entirety of the visuals from it. Mm-hmm. So you kind of get stuck with the uh, the style. Uh, of the assets that you use from the start, right? You start out with pixel art or block block art stuff, right? If you build a prototype with the block art stuff, it's really hard to move away from it, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's one of the biggest struggles, trying to make the, the game pop with the limitation on the artistic uh, talents that we have within our studio. Mm-hmm. And, and then that's... That's, I think that's the biggest one. And the next one would be mostly like, you know, trying to get the difficulty right. And I think uh, we, we've gotten a lot of help from our community and uh, gamers that we meet during the, sh- uh, the shows mm-hmm. uh, to help around with it. So that's kind of gotten a good process for it. Makes sense. Um, now, you were talking earlier about uh, wanting launching originally on PC and then wanting to move to like other platforms. Um, and you were talking about how kind of like how the Xbox transition has been semi difficult. Um, uh, it's it's more. I think it's more like uh, so we none of us worked on consoles before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not the, the the. I don't think it's the development process that's difficult. I think just trying to get all the all the basic business stuff done. You know, creating a lot, of, making a lot of signing a lot of agreements, creating a lot of accounts, getting everything that sorted away. That's been taking quite a bit of time because we've never done it before, and we're at the very end. Uh, but we we ended up starting to talk to talk to one of their technicians. Uh, on their sites because they're not letting us finish one of the process that we're in. But it's, you know, nothing, nothing big. And I, in terms of our programming and, and engineering ability, uh, we are, uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to, once everything's uh, all squared off, we'll be able to get that running really quickly. <laughs> the reason why I asked that is uh, I've been talking to a few different indie devs and they were talking about the process of getting it onto the Xbox. Wasn't on like the actual company itself, but all the like the legal framework, and then you have the like the port size that they limit, or and kind of like that side of the process. Mm-hmm. So, so I think our, ours is more about the the legal process side that's been holding it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um. So obviously, with Pax West around the corner, and then you said there's another build aspect coming. Um, is there just gauging everyone's feedback, finding investors, like for additional things to work on, or is there more of a like go there, see reaction, plan of release date, like or a little bit of both? Uh, well, I think I think all of the above. Uh, so this when we went to the shows uh, previously, uh, for uh, we only had two stations that does not. That only has the ability to do uh, perform single play, <laughs> but this time we'll have four stations. Uh, we're gonna set up a little private network so that, and we've uh, we're gonna let them actually be able to play co-op at the show. So uh, yeah, this time I think testing how the co-op things uh, working and getting getting you know hands-on feedback uh, from the players is gonna be a big thing. Uh, we are going to showcase a little bit of cooking that is not pizza making. Mm-hmm. And I want to see how players respond to that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we are getting closer and closer to our you know, launch, uh, deciding to you know, uh, figure out what the launch timeline is. So mm-hmm. like uh, getting overall, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Prepare. Preparation. On the, yeah, sense and excitement on how uh, players are, are viewing the game and how much we can penetrate through the noise the, during the show to get a little bit of a presence uh, in the market. Mm-hmm. I think that's gonna be that's going to be all key part of PAX West. Uh, we really wanted to go to 
Gamescom, but it's back to back doing both shows yep. with one person. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah, it's hard. It's a lot of work, yeah. and just wears down your body. Um, so for that PAX West demo, are you going to focus primarily on just controller support, or are you going to give players the option for keyboard and mouse, or...? Oh, we'll have keyboard, mouse, and controller. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the main part is that I that having being able to let them play co-op, or if, you know, there's a lot of friends hanging around, you know, walking around, right? And <laughs> If they, there's a lot of uh, groups of four that that are looking for a new co-op game, and we've had a lot of that in previous shows too. So they're like, you know what? Let's let them play co-op here. So, so not an actual gameplay aspect, but more of a marketing aspect. Have you like reached out to any like content creators slash influencers to like kind of help market the game, or like whenever? it gets to that beta, like, closed beta, just, like, word of mouth and people trying it aspect. Uh, we, I, so, during last alpha, we did reach out to a lot of content creators to try the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, and we have met a list of creators that we have met during the prior, previous shows that, that showed interest, so we are going to have another alpha test in coming month, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I think it always works better when there's something to play than just, you know, something to talk about. So we are, we're hoping to do another round of that uh, during our next test, play test. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to check on, I asked my team to actually give me extra questions in case. <laughs> and I'm just going to see if any of them actually did anything properly. All right. So let me... Just okay. Hold on one second. Sorry. So our uh, so the one site's head editor is a very Italian man. So he's okay. very much he's like ooh pizza aspect. Um, we already asked the question: Are there going to be different type of pizzas? And you said there's going to be different types of cooking. Um, with future content, are you going to see kind of like where players? Um, kind of like fall and what they like to cook and then lean towards that way for like different recipes you want to do or is it just going to be like different you're just going to keep trying different like cooking variations uh, you know what so we do want to have you know more pizza in the game mm -hmm. so I definitely say I would would not exclude new types of pizza or new type of pizza recipe to mm -hmm. show up in the mission, but it will be in a different form of mission. Or we're thinking about like trying to come up with things that players can do in the lobby while you know they wait for your uh, your uh, your friends to join and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, different recipe. Uh, I think I I would say any any of that is uh, out of the uh, you know out of the picture. I think we might pick up a uh, few of them. I think currently we're focusing on showcasing different aspects of the game, mm -hmm. uh, like you know different cooking style, different cooking mechanism, different uh, different uh, mission mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, we uh, there's a there's a group of. Uh, Group of some some folks in our studio that really wants to put pineapple pizza in, <laughs> and I'm more of a pizza purist, like your Italian friend. Ah. Like, oh come on, is that? Uh, anyways, but uh, I think something's gonna happen in the future. Uh, we're gonna see some ridiculous stuff in there. Yeah. No, th you just brought up a different question that I had in mind. Um, as the players completing like these different missions uh, and unlocking gear slash equipment. Um, is any of the money that obviously he wants to make his business succeed? Are you going to be able to upgrade the pizza shop? Oh, that's a that's that's a big piece of content. I mean, we could slap on some mechanics there, but it you know it has to be fun, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we do want to put it in. I think it'll depend on the uh, what do you call it resource constraints. Mm -hmm. uh, we might not be able to get that in during early access, mm -hmm. but if it goes really well, we might be able to, you know, 
pull, you know, pull something in there. Uh, but we do joke about, you know, making a sequel to this game and making a whole like uh, simulation aspect towards the pizza shop in the lobby. But you know, that's that's way in the future. But we do really like the idea of being able to upgrade the pizza shop, even if it's just uh, for visual sake. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we're definitely looking into it. Uh, that one also is, is uh, I guess, more conditional based on uh, reality of whether we could actually have the time and money to do it. No, that makes sense. Uh, and then I think the last question I'll leave off with, uh, will the player's character have different cosmetic upgrades? Yes, and you'll be able to see that during PAX. Okay. And then, so, obviously, with not being at PAX... Uh, just keep look, keep an eye out for the build. Oh, we might be able. To, so we're currently um, waging whether we should, uh, whether we should sort of like uh, prepare a demo build that can be played during the past period. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. We haven't decided yet. So, uh, but if we if we have a build that we can share, we'll definitely uh, reach out to you. All right. Uh, and of course, the first cosmetic is going to be, you know, very uh, cooking game worthy. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for your time. <laughs>